it's time to relax with some cozy JRPGs. So in this video, I'll be counting down the most relaxing JRPGs I've ever played, starting with a game that may surprise you, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. Now, before you write this entire list off, hear me out. Yes, Final Fantasy VIII definitely has some annoying mechanics, in particular the drawing mechanic, but if you play the remastered version, you can get around that by speeding it up and it just makes the whole game easier. Now, why would I put this game on this list and what makes it so relaxing? Well, if you just listen and bask in the vibe of these locations like Balam Garden, Fisherman's Horizon, and the town of Balam. For me, I just love walking around and just vibing out and looking at the different homes and seeing how cozy it is and seeing how they all put it together. Together. Not to mention that concert where you can choose the different instruments for Squall and Renoa's date. I just loved that. I loved saving right before and then mixing and matching the different instruments and seeing what kind of cool sounds I can make. Not to mention Triple Triad, the card game in this game. This is totally low stakes. You can play around and lots of different characters in the game will have decks. So it's fun to try to play these different card games, collect a big collection. And if you really want to, you can use them to gain some benefits in battle. Overall, I think Final Fantasy VIII definitely has gotten a bad reputation over the years, but if you're looking for a nice relaxing JRPG, I feel like you could do a whole lot worse than Final Fantasy VIII. Now for me, Lunar Silver Star Harmony is the quintessential classic JRPG. It's just so relaxing and chill. First of all, it's relatively easy, so if you're not looking to play a Dark Souls level game, you can come in here and have just a nice easygoing experience. Next, of course, is the charming story and the great cast of characters. It's very lighthearted and not serious at all. In fact, it's very comedic in a lot of areas. So if you want that, this definitely has that in spades. Not to mention, it also has some awesome music and great vibes. Again, it's that quintessential essential JRPG where you get to a new town, you walk into everybody's house, steal all their stuff, and it's just a nice relaxing time. Who knew stealing could be so relaxing? And also it's relatively short at around 25 hours, so if you're not looking for a big investment, this is a great way to just chill out. Now I'll admit it's not the easiest game to get a hold of these days, either on the PlayStation Portable or the PS1, hence why it's so low on this list, but if you do have the means, it's an absolutely incredible game and super relaxing. Next up, I have Etrian Odyssey. Basically, any of them. Pick one, because they're all kind of the same. Now, this might seem like an odd entry, but hang with me and I'll explain. To me, what I love about the Etrian Odyssey games, or really any dungeon crawlers, is they kind of boil RPGs down to their barest essence of just fighting enemies, leveling up, exploring, and then doing it all over again. And to me, what makes Etrian Odyssey special is it adds that extra layer of allowing you to map out the dungeons. Especially on DS and 3DS, where you can map it all out and draw it. To me, I love to do doing that. I definitely have a bad case of OCD, so me doing every single little line and dungeon and getting everything just perfectly right, I don't know. To me, it was very relaxing. Now, at times it can be challenging, but if you want to just put the game on easy and enjoy grinding and leveling up and mapping out the dungeons, that might be the best way to go for you. And also, if you don't have a 3DS or a DS, or some of those games are really expensive, which they're starting to get, especially after they close the eShop, there are three upcoming remasters for both the Switch and PC, so that might be a great way to go for for you. And they're also releasing some DLC for the character portraits with both SMT and Persona characters, which is really cool. And if you want to just go straight Persona in this same type of gameplay, check out maybe Persona Q or Persona Q2. Again, those games are probably pretty expensive these days and can be a little bit challenging. But if you have the money and are willing to play on easy mode, you're in for a great relaxing experience. Ah, one of my favorite JRPGs of all time, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. Now, I know this game is notorious for being a little bit difficult, but if you put it on easier, then it might be much more relaxing for you. Now, outside of that, what makes it so relaxing? Well, in a way, it feels like you're playing a Studio Ghibli movie. In a lot of ways, because you are, because they did a lot of the cutscenes and the character designs for this game. It's also just super charming and lighthearted. You play as this character, Oliver, and he's trying to save his mother, and how heartwarming is that. And outside of Oliver, there's just a great cast of characters like Mr. Drippy, who's kind of super hyper and weird, and all the other characters that eventually join your party. And also that soundtrack is something special from Joe Hisaishi, who also did a lot of music for Studio Ghibli films. It's personally one of my favorite soundtracks of all time because it has such a great mix of happy, jolly town music, great relaxing music, and fun combat music as well. And when you're not just running around exploring this beautiful world and taking in its jolly vibes, you can collect monsters very similar to Pokemon. So so basically, no matter what you're doing in Nino Kuni, you're probably going to have a nice, relaxing time doing it. 
With Square Enix recently updating their remaster port of Chrono Cross, I feel like now is the perfect time to play it. I put it on this list for a lot of similar reasons why I included Final Fantasy VIII. It's an absolutely gorgeous game, probably the best looking game on the PlayStation 1, and looks even better in its remastered form. And to me, I just love exploring this world. To me, there's nothing better in an RPG than a tropical oceanside island setting. I absolutely love that vibe. And in my opinion, I think this has the best soundtrack of any video game ever. It has such a great variety of upbeat, jolly tunes, really relaxing ones, and hyped up ones for the intro of the game and for combat. And to me, there's so many fun ways to play the game outside of combat. One of my favorite things I love to do was walk around and try to collect all the text box frames. You start out with something basic, but you can collect things that look like seashells, trees, wood, and all kinds of fun stuff. I've never really seen that in any other game, which is surprising, so I love that they have it here. And also, you can collect a huge roster of party members, so if you want to walk around and try and see what different combinations you can get or just to see what characters you can recruit to your party, that's also another fun way to get more out of the game. Not to mention, it has a really fascinating story. Now, if you just pretend that Chrono isn't in the name and just enjoy it for what it is, I feel like you'll have a much better experience. Overall, I think this is still a really great game and has a super nice, relaxing vibe to it. All right, next up we have Dragon Quest Builders 2. I absolutely love this game. Now, for me, why I love it so much is I like the idea of Minecraft, but to me, I could never really get into it. To me, it felt a little too open-ended. I'm not really great at making my own fun with these types of games, so the fact that Dragon Quest Builders 2 guided me a little bit was the perfect balance. And to me, I loved taking the extra time to really build up the different zones as part of these quests that you do, decorating all the different houses, adding different little adornments, and even building up the defenses was so fun. To me, the story didn't really matter. For me, it was all about building up the town, collecting items, and doing the quests. It was just so chill, fun, and relaxing. This is one of those games that you can kind of just turn your brain off, explore around, knock out quests, build things, and just have a great time doing it. And sure, if you want to get involved in the story, you can, but to me, that's not really what this game is about. So no matter what you want to do, whether it's doing the quest, building things up, experiencing a story, you can have a nice relaxing time with Dragon Quest Builders too. One of the most underrated 3DS games of all time, in my opinion, is Fantasy Life. Now, it's a relatively simple game. There's not a whole lot to it. It's not a big epic story. The gameplay is kind of simplistic, but it's just so addictive and relaxing. So in the game, you can take on a variety of different lives in the game, whether it be a lumberjack, an archer, a knight, or something like that. And once you pick that life, you do quests to master that life, and then you move on to the next one. Again, it's very laid back and easy. The game is full of that signature level five charm. Everybody's just smiley and happy, there's lots of bright colors and uplifting music. And for the gameplay, it's kind of just a series of checklists. Like for example, you'll be a woodcutter or an archer or something like that. And it's like, okay, go collect five wood and then go kill five monsters using this weapon. And again, it's nothing super complex, but for a nice relaxing game, I feel like it's kind of perfect. And honestly, I couldn't get enough of it. Even when it was over and I did every single life, I was like, oh no, I wanted more. And thankfully we won't have to wait too much longer because there is gonna be a sequel coming out soon. So so until that game comes out, you can definitely check out Fantasy Life for a nice relaxing time. All right, next up, I have the Atelier series, and honestly, I feel like you could pick any of them. If you don't mind the stricter time limits, then I would suggest Verona. And if you hate the time limits and just want to enjoy the story and the chill vibes, then Ryza might be more your speed. To me, this series perfectly encapsulates the vibe that this video is going for. Super charming, super fun, super laid back, and very relaxing. And what I love is most of the games are very happy and easy going. You know, there may be some plot of saving the world or whatever, and sometimes there's not. Not, but overall, there's just really low stakes and it's just all about, you know, the happy times with your character and I just love that. And to me, I love the alchemy mechanics that this series is known for. There's a fun yet simplistic charm to, you know, going out, collecting items, building things and doing it again. For me, my personal favorite in the series is Rorona. I think what I loved most about it was that it was pretty simplistic and straightforward. You would just get quests, had a time limit to do them in, and then you would complete them and move on to the next series. And also, I just love Rorona. She's so cute. The whole world is super charming super beautiful and absolutely great music. So like I said, I would basically just go and pick whichever character you think looks the cutest or what mechanics you think would suit your play style best. And what's great about Gus is they've done a really good job of porting these games to modern consoles. So whichever one you're interested in playing in, it's probably available on your console of choice. 
And at number two, we have Pokemon, and much like Atelier, pick the one that suits you best, as they're all kind of the same. Can't deal with the older graphics and gameplay? Then go modern with Scarlet and Violet. Love the old school vibes? Then hey, maybe check out Red and Blue. To me, Pokemon always felt like the perfect game to unwind with at the end of a long day. They're relatively easy, it's so fun to explore, especially in the zones in between towns and the towns themselves. And also, it was so cool to build up a team of different monsters and try them all out. I know some people like to go one element or just kind of build, you know, the one that is most suited for the game, like being in the meta, if you will. But to me, I just liked, you know, whatever looked cool and having a variety. So I always had one to go with whatever element I was fighting. And also, if you want to go for the more modern games, you can customize your character, which I personally love doing. Overall, they just have these happy, uplifting vibes. All the characters are always very encouraging and cheering for you. As an adult, that can kind of seem a little condescending, especially because these games are kind of aimed at children. But after dealing with the dredges of the world coming down on you, it's nice to get some positive, encouraging vibes, even if it's from a video game. If you somehow have never played a Pokemon game or want to replay one, I feel like these games are perfect to relax with after a long day. Now, to me, the most relaxing JRPGs I could think of that I played is Rune Factory. Again, I feel like you should just pick the one that suits you best. The three that I enjoyed a lot were Tides of Destiny on PS3, Rune Factory 4, which you can play on modern consoles, but I played on 3DS, as well as Rune Factory 5. They all have a great balance of relaxing, farming, and life sim gameplay. You don't even really have to get into the combat if you don't want to until later on. You can just walk around, do farming, talk with the townsfolk, and just kind of bask in the vibes of this game. To me, there's a simple joy from tilling the land of your farm or just going to the ocean to fish. And when the combat does become necessary, it's relatively easy and simplistic. So the stakes aren't super high, you can just relax and have fun with it. Now, I know that it doesn't run great on Switch, but to me, I loved five the most. I just thought the town was gorgeous. It has so many great colors and so many fun little spots to explore. It also has a fantastic cast of characters, both deep and funny, so it was always great to relax with and talk to all these different characters and interact with them. When I want to turn my brain off and just relax at the end of a day, to me there's really nothing else that comes to mind that's better for that than Rune Factory. Now in case you missed my last video, be sure you check it out right here. And special thanks to Reset Switch, Tyler Kuzava, and the Miyazaki Man for supporting me over on Patreon. To get exclusive videos and other cool perks, consider supporting me over on patreon.com slash thegamingshelf. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.